Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here on this show, and I'm here to talk about uh, some NASCAR uh, news. Most of it is probably going to be about uh, the fines and suspensions that come out of that uh, North Wilkesboro brawl with Kyle Busch and uh, Ricky Stenhouse. And what shocker, NASCAR management doesn't know what they're doing. So, let, let's talk about it. So, we'll come out today. So here was the suspensions that were announced and fine and a fine. So fight penalties. Now this was from Bob Parker's. Steenhouse was fined at seventy five thousand dollars. It was something of the code of conduct in the NASCAR rule book. So you're gonna find drivers but but yet NASCAR's gonna put this all over their social media, they're gonna promote it like crap. And they'll make money off of it. So, let's get to the team suspensions. Richard Stenhouse Sr., which is his dad, got involved. An indefinite suspension. I mean, I understand that. Because you can't have, like, parents getting involved. So, I, I, get that, I get that suspension. So, the mechanic, Clint Myrick, has been suspended for eight races. Uh, the engine toner, uh, Keith Matthews, four races, and the thing is, no penalties to Kyle Busch or his team. And I know, so we can inten start intentionally dumping people now. I thought that pre precedent was say it that you can't intentionally rape people. But it's Kyle Busch, I guess NASCAR let him get away with it. And oh, that's literally. And people will be like, oh, because it was done, and done on track. Ricky want to do something they should have waited and done it. Shot on the track. Yada, 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 yada. yada. But that's dead ass opposite the dead ass opposite of what NASCAR has done the last few years. They've suspended people for on track at retaliation, citing using cars as weapons and let people throw hands. Austin Hill got nothing when he punched uh, uh, Mike Snyder. I think it was a few years ago at Martinsville. Nothing happened. Chase Elliott Bubba Wallace got suspended for intentionally raking people. I mean, I'm not using that as a, I'm just saying that as an example. I'm not comparing two, those two incidents. Because I know it's at, one's at high speed, one's at slow speed, but still, you can't, I thought they set that precedent, you can't intentionally rape people. But NASCAR will market it, will market it. And NASCAR shouldn't be promoting the fight as much as they have if they're going to penalize someone $75,000. Just, just because. NASCAR's going to use this to market itself and then punches punches the people involved is just laughable to me. I mean, you can't use the fight footage to promote the sport but penalize one involved. It's just a bad look and you're just trying, trying to just capitalize to make money off of it. I know that you're supposed to try and, you know, profit your sport, make money, but you can't just go out there and penalize, find somebody. It's just, I don't know, just stupid to me. But yeah, um, so yeah, four, so some crew member suspensions there as well. Eh, I don't think anybody should have got fine, fined or suspended, but Kyle Busch should have got something at least. But of course he doesn't because NASCAR blazing the fraud as usual. So, um, Brett Moffat uh, will be in the JGR number 19 Xfinity car at Iowa, where he's from, so he'll be at his home track. Man. I won't be surprised if he won, but I mean, I wish this guy had a full-time ride. Brent Moffat's underrated, but just sponsorship issues, I guess. But I love seeing JGR giving uh, the base some good drive, underrated drivers to me opportunities, like Justin Bonsinger, now Brent Moffat. Just blows my mind how he does have a full-time ride. It's just so little sponsorship. But he was hanging around the JGR Xfinity hard at Darlington, so it makes sense. But the Massive W, glad he gets a shot and it's at his home track, too. So the Coca-Cola 600 uh, is sold out for Sunday night at Charlotte. Apparently. I mean, it's not surprising. I mean, all those big events always get sold out for NASCAR. Daytona 500, Coke 600. So, but I'm super excited for the Coke 600 because it's usually one of the best races of the year. Especially this next-gen car, it's one, usually one of the best races with Kansas.
So, um, uh, Alan Sawyer on a Sirius XM uh, NASCAR radio uh, was basically talking about why Kyle, what Kyle Busch wasn't fine or suspended for wrecking on pur- for wrecking Stenhouse on purpose. He said, you look at the race track, race track in the situation. It's early. It's the All-Star race. It's hard racing. If if uh, we some if we if we find something we have proven over time that it, if intentionally looking someone in the right rear we've reacted to that. About nice hard as a joke. They pick and choose when to administrate penalties. I mean, yeah, I know it's a short track and it's not high speed, but he hooked him and it's clear as day. I guess NASCAR just picks and chooses who they want to penalize. I guess. Uh, Sage Karam is back. He joins the uh, Synergy Racing program and, program and will pilot the number 26 Synergy Modular GR Super next weekend's Pacific Office 147 at Portland. So Sage Karam will be back at Portland. Which he could probably have a shot to win. So he's been pretty good at those like, road courses in Xfinity. Uh, here's the purse money for Charlotte Weekend. Cut $9 million. Xfinity $1 million in trucks. $782,000. Man, the truck series is in such a dark place with the purse money. Like $782,000. Uh, Ricky Stenhouse uh, told uh, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio that he still hasn't decided if he's going to appeal his 75 k fine for the fight. His team, JTG, is still deciding whether they want to appeal the team suspension stemming from that fight. I mean, honestly, I would appeal it, but would it even be worth it? I don't think NASCAR would uh, rescind that fine. Honestly, I don't think they would. So the 2025 uh, NASCAR Hall of Fame class uh, was announced yesterday. Uh, the class is Carl Edwards, uh, Ricky Rudd, and Ralph Moody. Man, what a class. I saw some people were skeptical. Oh, why is Carl Edwards in? But he won a, ex- uh, well, at the time, nationwide championship and sa- about 72 total NASCAR wins. Glad Carl Edwards got in. I don't see how people be like, oh, how'd he get in? But he's currently 14th all time in NASCAR wins with 72, plus an Xfinity championship. He deserves it. But people will probably but will think about, oh, it, the, the Hall of Fame is just about the Cup Series. It's not just about the Cup Series. It's just all across NASCAR. So glad to see Carl Edwards get in the Hall of Fame. And a shout out to uh, the... Landmark Award uh, winner as well to contributions for contributions to NASCAR, which is Safer Barrier Carrier. Uh, Dr. Dean Sicking, uh, one of the best creations, was uh, creating that Safer Barrier and made uh, NASCAR racing much safer. Uh, Andres Perez, who raced in ARCA the last two seasons for Rev Racing, he will, he will drive the Spire number no. 7 truck next week at Worldwide Technology Raceway, or gate, uh, Raceway and make his uh, Xfinity debut. I mean, uh, truck debut, excuse me. Uh, Josh Balicki um, will be driving the J. Will be dri- uh, his first race for JGR, the number 19 Xfinity car, will be next week at Portland. I think, hopefully, he can. Uh, the most, I think it's a deser- deserved opportunity, and hopefully, he gets a good finish out of it. Uh, Ty Dillon will drive the number 50 Cup car this weekend, so. That's a guaranteed non-stage caution right there. Really, all the nice car stuff I want to talk about here. So, um, yeah, until next time, I have a lot. Peace.